Hey Tim. Oh, yeah, I wasn't sure if we were still talking. Bill? No, Bill's just a friend. No, I promise. Okay. All right, speak soon. Bye. So guys, it's no secret that I really do love my Apple Silicon Macs, but it is important not to get too entrenched and blindingly loyal to a single brand or product. And this means maybe every now and then having a look at some of the other options out there. So for this particular video, I switched to a Windows laptop for seven days, and I just wanted to give you guys my opinion and my experience over the last couple of days. Now, I think this is a really important comparison to make at this point in time, because I think up until now, everyone's been kind of blinded by the really poor performance of Intel MacBooks, and not just Intel MacBooks, but Intel in general, while in the background, companies like AMD with their Ryzen lineup and also Nvidia with their RTX GPUs have really been releasing some awesome and really powerful products, and laptops featuring these particular components might actually be more competitive with Apple Silicon than you might think. Now, this is a Razer Blade 14. It has a Ryzen 5900HX CPU and a RTX 3060 GPU. You. Now, the actual price of this thing is very similar to an M1 MacBook Pro if you upgrade the M1 MacBook Pro accordingly with one terabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And if you actually do that, you'll find that this particular model is actually $100 cheaper than the equivalently specced M1 MacBook. Now, this video is not about this Razer laptop in particular. It's just about switching from an M1 MacBook to one of the competitors and talking about the experience. If you wanna see future videos on these topics, such as the performance breakdown between these two machines and other laptops, stay tuned for that content. So first things first, let's talk about the ecosystem. So as you guys already know, the MacBook and just Apple in general has an awesome ecosystem. So you get things like iCloud, App Handoff, iMessage, and I've featured and talked about these features a lot on this channel already. So after seven days, the thing that I realized about the ecosystem is that if you use it very frequently, so you're sending iMessages all day, you're airdropping frequently, you will miss it and you will sorely miss it because Windows, you know, as good as it is and as good as Windows 11 may potentially be, it just doesn't come close to what the Mac and Apple has to offer in terms of ecosystem and handoff and that kind of thing. And I never think Windows will ever come close. And probably the biggest realization I had after spending a week switching from the Mac to a PC is I don't actually use this ecosystem as much as I thought. And I also realized is that no matter what platform we're on, whether it's Mac, PC, we tend to use the same apps anyway. So for me personally, I don't use the Notes app any longer. I actually use Notion for that. I also use Discord, Slack, and things like WhatsApp to actually talk to people. So I don't use iMessage. And then if we actually talk about AirDrop, I very rarely use that because I'll just use iCloud, which can be downloaded as a client on the PC, by the way, to just sync folders and files between my devices. Now this realization was a little bit surprising for me personally because I really did think I would use the Mac and Apple ecosystem more than what I actually did. And it took switching to the PC to realize that. Now again, like I said before, if you are a heavy user of the ecosystem, things like iMessage, AirDrop, Notes, all that kind of stuff, you definitely will notice a difference switching. But if you're kind of on the fence like me, the difference is not as big as you might think. So moving on to the next biggest difference I found, and for me, I do a lot of file management. So I have obviously this YouTube channel, so all the footage, the files, the thumbnails, audio, and I've also got the business end of things, so invoicing, emails, all that kind of stuff. So I spend a lot of time managing files and putting folders together. And while the Finder app on the Mac works perfectly fine, I don't really have any complaints about it, I found that File Explorer on Windows was much more intuitive and just easier to use for me personally. So for example, just a single click on this PC will reveal all of your drives connected to the PC and their available capacity. I also found sorting and renaming files a lot easier. And again, this is such a hard thing to sort of put into words because at the end of the day, the differences between the two are very subtle. And this is mainly gonna come into effect if you're like me and you do a lot of file organization. Now, moving on to the next section, which is gaming. Yes, guys, I know, obviously, you shouldn't buy a MacBook if you want to do a lot of gaming. 
get a PC for that. But guys, the reality is for a lot of people out there, their MacBook is their only computer and they can't afford or they simply just can't have another computer to play games on like a dedicated Windows PC or a laptop, for example. And this makes total sense because a lot of the most popular videos on my channel are actually gaming videos featuring the M1 Max. So people are obviously interested in this topic. Now, it's pretty fair to say that Windows laptops will destroy MacBooks when it comes to gaming. Not necessarily because they're more powerful because you can get different configs, but a lot of the time it's because of the operating system and Windows is just a lot more gaming friendly compared to a MacBook. And for example, this razor blade here absolutely destroys gaming. So I can play AAA rated games like Warzone on this bad boy and get around 100 FPS on a 144 hertz screen. And there's just no way that a Mac can come close to this performance, even if you're using Bootcamp, which you can't on Apple Silicon Macs because it doesn't work. So why is this big difference in gaming performance important to me personally? Well, over the last couple of years, one of the main things that has stopped me from switching fully over to Mac OS is that I just cannot game on it at all. So it's great for casual gamers, things like really old school games or uh, Fortnite, things like that, that you can still play on the Mac. But if you wanna play anything competitively, so Rainbow Six Siege, Tarkov, Warzone, you need a PC. And so I've always had to have a dedicated gaming PC on my desk or some kind of laptop to play any kind of games with my friends. And the result is, of course, as long as I still play games every now and then, I have to have two computers if I want to continue using a Mac. I need to have the Mac and also a PC to play games on. Now, moving on to the next section, which is how you can sort of configure and customize each of these products. And I think guys, this has given me a really deep appreciation for MacBooks in general and just how solid of a product they are all around. And I really just don't think any Windows laptops out there at the moment can come close to that overall package and performance that the Apple Silicon Macs can offer. That being said though, it is really nice and really refreshing to have a really wide range of products and configurations and specs to choose from on the Windows side of things. If you want a juiced up laptop for gaming, you have multiple options, or if you want a super lightweight two-in-one PC like a Surface, there's that option too. I have noticed that Apple has been locking down its products at an ever increasing rate. And to be honest, guys, it's getting a little bit worrying. MacBooks are slowly becoming unrepairable by anyone other than Apple. And although Apple Silicon is great, I fear that it's going to allow Apple to lock down its ecosystem even more as Apple Silicon is obviously proprietary. With these Windows laptops, you can basically choose any configuration you want. And when it comes to repairability, on average, they are much more repairable than Macs. So if this thing stops working or just dies, you're not gonna be as screwed as you would be if this bad boy stopped. Now, it's only been seven days with these two machines. And like I said, guys, I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos on not only this machine, but other Windows laptops out there and also comparing them against the M1 MacBooks and also the future Apple Silicon Macs like the M1X or M2, for example. And I think this is gonna be really interesting because like I said before, other manufacturers are catching up to Apple and we're gonna have a really large battle of the computers very, very soon, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Let me know down below if you have any comments or questions. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.